in this episode of Game of Thrones, a few major things has happened. We have Ned Stark leaving his position as the Lord Protector of King Robert. The main reason being is basically what they've been arguing about for the past uh, few episodes, you know, this entire season so far. What to do with the Targaryen siblings. Especially now that there's no knowledge that Daenerys, I mean Daenerys, Daenerys is actually pregnant with Khal Drogo's child. So that makes King Robert even more on edge and he feels as though they should get ready for the war. And once again, Nestor's like, listen, she's still a child, all right? I'm not in the business of killing children and there's still no way in how they're gonna be able to pass through that damn sea. But King Robert's not having it. You know, he's okay, what if they do? And Nestor once again said, like he said in episode two, we'll drive them back to the sea. It's not that big a deal. King Robert's like, come on. He's telling his cancel to basically put some sense into this noble fool, as he calls Ned Stark. And they're agreeing. Well, they're agreeing with both sides, but they still take the king's side, ultimately. And Ned Stark's like, you know what? I don't care. I'm done. So after this, we have a conversation between the king and his wife. They reflect on their marriage and how it was basically been a hell marriage. You know, he's been a lying, cheating, drunk, essentially. And thankfully, they've been able to have some offspring. And they talk about the king's love for Ned Stark's sister and how the queen, and about how Queen Lannister is still mad to this day, or to a, to a certain extent, that a corpse is more important than her. And how she kind of asked him, was there ever a point in their marriage in which he actually loved her? And he was like, no. Does that make you feel happy? She's like, no. It really doesn't make me feel anything, especially at this point. So they talk furthermore about the Targaryens and what they should do. And which is kind of ironic, both um, the king and Joffrey have the same idea, basically trying to unite all the kingdoms into one army under, king, under the king's rule, whether it be himself, Joffrey, and basically to take out the Targaryens, and any other threat that poses their way, they just squash them, like ants. After this episode, when I have a, no, <laughs> after this episode, after this, we get further details about what kind of mind state Caitlyn's sister is in. Now, in the previous episodes, we've been told that Kate, Caitlyn's sister, is a little bit off. She's a little bit unhinged. And we get to see in full display in this episode. She's very frantic. She's very, she's very paranoid, especially when it comes to the Lannisters. And the fact that Tyrion is right there in front of her as a prisoner for her sister puts her even more on edge. She don't trust any Lannisters. I believe her, her husband was killed by, by the Lannisters around five years ago. Um, she's openly breastfeeding her son, who I believe is like seven or eight. So that's kind of strange and weird. Um, and Tyrion's like, he keeps on saying... He's guiltless. He had nothing to do with Brian, you know, fall and his crippleness. But she's like, whatevs. And, you know, I believe Taryn also said that if you kill me, my family will know about it. So she said, yeah, you're right. So we'll put you in a prison. And this prison is basically open. And if you make one little mistake in your steps, you'll fall straight down to the great abyss. So I believe that's all that really happened in this episode. Besides a little bit of Sansa, you know, she didn't really have that much to do in this episode. And more of Ira and her sword teacher, teaching her how to, you know, the sword fighting concept and all that. Besides that, that's all. Thank you guys for watching. If I missed anything, write it down below in the comments. Adios.